Welcome, everybody. Hi. It is another incredibly beautiful SAI. <laughs> we are here. The The rush of Tishrei has definitely hit some of us, all of us. Um, so I want to start off by saying a huge, huge thank you to our sponsor for tonight. Tonight's for bringing is sponsored by Miriam Grumberg. Lili Nishmas for Yisrael ben Gedalia Karf in honor of his yurt site. May his neshama have a really high aliyah. So we can have her in mind, have him in mind. Um, also, something really, really beautiful. I want to give a shout out to the incredible Esther Malka, who saves the day. <laughs> she is the greatest. And I'm just so grateful She that she gets the snacks and sets up and does. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who helped. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I'm sure they are spotless. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So the way that SAI works, SAI stands for Systematic Avoided Initiative, which means that sometimes we think, oh, I should be really working on myself. I should do Avoida. I should work on different things and we don't really have a system. We kind of have like a big goal and not like bite-sized pieces. So Systematic Avoid Initiative sets up a daily schedule where you do bite-sized readings, which is actually a big shout out to Mrs. Jacobson. Her husband wrote the book that we use for our 60 days. It's called 60 Days. And every day of the month of Elul and the month of Tishrei, there's one page of reading. It is so beautiful. I think this year, every year I read it and every year it hits different spots in different places. And so this year it's hit in a very sweet spot. So I'm really grateful. Um, and every, all the ladies that have read their daily reading and have done at least one um, at least one journal entry in their own private journal, I, I don't, nobody checks it, Hashem, it's between them and Hashem. And when they do that, we give out prizes at the far ring. It's so I want to share our prize for today is um a beautiful book actually there's an extra edition which i'm going to share in a minute but the beautiful book is called chuva myths um this book was written by rabbi levi Livrov, and he has taken the concept of chuva and flipped it on its head well not really it's the actual chuva according to chassidus but I'll tell you that many of us have misunderstandings of what tshuva really means. The process of tshuva, um, we actually host an Arab Yom Kippur meal and we host a very big Matzah Yom Kippur meal. And at both of those meals, we were discussing tshuva and the relationship between us and Hashem and how we feel the judgment of Yom Kippur. And a lot of people have a lot of intensity, a lot of misconception about their relationship with Hashem. And this book really has the answers in a really easily digestible really fun you can see it has little pictures and it's just gorgeous and so so on point so i want to give a huge mazel tov to everybody who earned their book i will just announce their names and we will get on with a fair ring in so a huge mazel tov to Hana simcha hillel hello um a huge mazel tov to adina kalmowitz a huge mazel tov to shelby aronson i don't know her married name Shall we? Okay, I'll get that. I have to save it on my phone. I have huge mazel tov to Esther Malka Cohen, Michal Miller, Chaya Matasav, Esther Citrin, Yosefa Wood Eisenberg, and Ariella Zuckerman. Call uh, a kavod for all of your hard work, and you can come and receive your book. And with that, yay! Round of applause to all of them. Um, with that, I will say. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Mrs. Jacobson for joining us tonight and every other night. I think Mrs. Jacobson has seen us from one apartment to another apartment to one space to another space. Baruch Hashem, she is our most beloved speaker over all the years. And um, Mrs. Jacobson is the director of the Rosh Chodesh Society, <laughs> JLI, Roar Chabad JLI. Um, and she's also my wonderful friend. And I think that's the best part. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll pass this on to you. Okay, maybe I'll clip it onto here. Does this work? Does this work like this? 
Oh, okay. Go, yes. Okay. So good evening, everybody. Michal, thank you so much. And thank you so much for inviting me. It's really, it's an honor to be here. It really, really is. I just will begin. I actually, I, I just thought of this when you started speaking. I'll share something beautiful with you that sometimes we wonder, you know, we think we, we want to do something. And then we say, okay, yeah, we get very excited. We say, we're going to do it. And then, you know, we start to try to do it and we realize it's not so easy. Can't do it myself. You need to raise money. You need more people. Oh, you know what? It was a nice thought, but maybe another time in a different part of my life, or maybe somebody else will do it. So I want to tell you that I learned something that if somebody really, really sets their mind to do something and they decide to do it, not only they could do it, but they could do it in the most amazing way. So being that you mentioned the book 60 Days, there was there is a woman in Mexico City who contacted my husband one year ago and said to him, I have your book and I love it. And um, I want to get it translated into Spanish. And we're going to have it ready for the next Tishrei, for the next Elo, because it starts in Elo. Started talking to her and she's going to get it translated. She's going to get it laid out. She's going to get it printed. She's going to get a chip. And he didn't want to burst her bubble, but he said to her, you know, uh, we, we, we produce books. This is our life. And um, it's going to take a lot longer and it's going to be a lot more costly and it's going to be a lot more involved than you think. She says, trust me, I'm going to get it done. He didn't want to dissuade her. So he said, okay, I, we support you all the way. Let's see what we have to do. And I want to tell you something. Um, before, a few weeks before Rosh Chodesh Elul, my husband and I, and our daughter who was actually working on this project, went to Mexico City for the launch and inauguration of this book in Spanish. It was a whirlwind, a whirlwind of three days of eight events in all over Mexico City, big ones, small ones, over a thousand people bought the book and there's a huge following now. We're reprinting it because it, we, everything that was printed was, was already sold. I cannot get over this woman. Now I said to her, now you're in my conscience forever. Anytime I think I can't do something, I think of you, I can't get rid of you. <laughs> you're like, you don't let me sleep, you know? But it was just so amazing to me that people were just coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, this it changed my life, it changed my life. And we start to realize, you know, when we, we say that there's really shivim panim la Torah, we really do have to start thinking about translating the whole Torah into everything, all the Hasidus, all the, everything into 70 languages because there are people everywhere who want to learn. And we're so lucky we live in an era today where these things could really happen. It's, it's, it's difficult, it requires time and effort and resources and money and manpower, but it is doable. You know, I remember learning when I was a girl in school how when the, a Rebbe, one of our Rebbeim would speak, there, were, there, there was no way, even not on Shabbos, there, there were no recording devices. What did they do? Somebody sat and they wrote it. They wrote it. They tried to use whatever very crude carbon paper they had then, and they would try to make as many layers as they could. And the most amazing thing would happen. They would only have several copies because how many copies could they have? So the best, best students from the whole yeshiva, they got to sit in front of it and read it this way. And the and everybody, one few, few people read it this way. A few people learned how to read it upside down. A few people learned how to read it this side. And a few people learned how to read it that way so that they could make the most of the copy of the copies that they had. So today we're really so, so lucky. And it's really a tremendous chus that we are, you know, we do have the greatest challenges of this generation, but we also have the greatest chusim of this generation. We will see the coming of Mashiach. And that's why everything that comes along with it, we have to see not only the, the, the parts that don't look so good, but the very, very good parts, which are all of the you know, all of the advantages that we do have. We think about the technology. Yes, you can use it in many ways, but Hashem put into this world only for one reason. He put into this world so that we could use it 
for the good. So here we are before but we, Rosh Hashanah has passed, Yom Kippur has passed. We know that we all have definitely been granted the Ksiva part of a good year, the Hasima part of a good year. We have until Hashanah Rabbah, in case, in case, in case, something is not 100 plus percent, by the time Hashanah Rabbah comes around, we will be sealed 1 million percent for everything which will be great and fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Amen is right. So here we come. Now we're ready to get to, we're coming to rejoice with the Yontif of Sukkot. And as Michal said, um, really, if you think about what Chassidus accomplished, it accomplished something that's tremendous. I don't even think we know in this generation how much it has changed. But if you learn the history of the Jewish people before Chassidus came around, the time of, of starting from Sluchus and the whole Elul, Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, it was a time where people literally were frightened. They feared it. They worried about it. But Chassidus came to show us that it's the opposite of that. We don't have to worry. Yes, we have to work and we have to find things that we have to be able to make ourselves better, but to do it out of love. And so this also took the whole concept of fear of Yira and put it on its head as well. It's not like the Rabbeim right? It's not Yira is not fear. We don't, we're not scared. We don't have dread, God forbid. It's awe. We are in awe of something that is far greater than a regular word can explain. We're in awe of Hashem. And because Hashem is the king, and who are we? We're nothing compared to the king. So it's a concept and a matter of awe, not of fright or dread, God forbid. So actually, I had a guest at my house on Rosh Hashanah. My husband met him in Shul, and my husband said to him, uh, where are you staying? Because my husband knew him from many, many years ago. And he, he didn't live in New York then. And he said, I, I, live, in, I live in Crown Heights now. So he invited him to come eat with us. And he, he comes originally from, he was born into a family in Lakewood. And he came from a very, very Litvish family. And he had a whole journey. But he said, you cannot imagine the difference of how Elul and Tishrei was in my, where I grew up and how it is here. If I wouldn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe that it's, the same preparation for and the same holidays. So I think that we are very, very lucky in this respect. And we are now coming to Sukkot. And Sukkot is really, it's the, it's the embrace of joy. That's what being in a Sukkah is. You know, Sukkot is one of those, is a mitzvah that is very unique. It's the mitzvah that when we do this mitzvah of sitting in a Sukkah, the, not only are we doing it with our entire being, because our entire physical body and soul are sitting in the sukkah. The sukkah is actually embracing us instead of us embracing the actual concept of holding an object and doing a mitzvah. It's embracing us, and it is literally, you could say, if you want to be poetic, the sukkah is really, it's Hashem's embrace. It's Hashem's hug. Hashem is hugging us. And we know that the greenery on top of the shah that is symbolic, it, is, it's, it means that it stands for the Anane Hakavo, the special clouds that protected the Jews when they traveled in the desert. And so it's all encompassing. It's surrounding us. But what is it surrounding us with? It's surrounding us with love and hugs and warmth and the knowledge that Hashem carries us. Hashem takes care of us. So in this respect, I want to just share something with you. I happen to have come across it a long time ago, and I'm embarrassed to say I learned it, then I, I really forgot, I forgot about it. And recently, I was looking for something, and I came across it. And I decided um, that it would be so nice to share it with you here today. I'm, I'm obviously, I'm just going to share a little piece of it, but it's so moving and beautiful. And it shows us that when we think, who are we? Like I said before, how, what could I accomplish? I'm just a little person. What could I do? Or, you know, there are people that are really tell me they're hachamim. They're really Torah scholars. They know so much. They could go out there. They could teach. They could make people, 
you know, that they could teach people, they could make people excited, they could inspire people. But we thought, you know, okay, what could I do? I could do my little thing maybe. I could bake challah and feed somebody. Yeah, it's pretty good. It tastes pretty good. I could invite people. You know, but what, what, what could I really do? And we never, we, what we could do is far more greater than we actually give ourselves credit for. Not that we're looking for credit here. Why? Because it's our neshama that could do whatever we are supposed to do. So it's not about the brute strength if somebody is very physically strong or physically rich or physically uh, beautiful or physically talented. Those things are all gifts that Hashem gives us to help us do what our neshama is supposed to accomplish. But everybody has gifts. Some of us have one kind of gift. Some of us have another kind of gift. But we all have been given something from Hashem that could really help us do what we are supposed to do. So in this, I'll tell you what I'm reading from. It's from Sefer HaSechus, Hey Tuf Shin Hey. Okay, this is, if you ever have a chance to read the Sefer HaSechus or the Sefer HaMaimarim from the Friar de Karebbe, the previous Rebbe Rebbe Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson, it's absolutely beautiful. It's all in Yiddish, and it's not... As Yiddish goes, it's from the less difficult Yiddish of the different sihas, if so to speak. And, you know, I don't know, some, I wonder if any of this was ever translated. If it was, that would be amazing. If it wasn't, it should be. Because it's so, in general, the Friar de Karebe wrote the most, had the most beautiful, beautiful writing. Very warm, very engaging. If you start to read it, and you get really involved and engrossed, you could realize a few hours later that you're still reading. That's the kind of beautiful, beautiful writing. And it's very, very heartfelt. You feel like he's talking to you. So the Friar de Kareba writes this, which I think it's so appropriate for us to speak about today. It's Tafshin Hay, that is 19, Tafshin Yud would be 1950, so it's 1945. And it's the second night of Sukkot in the Sukkah. Okay, so the Friar de Kadebo is for bringing in the Sukkah, 1945. Okay, this is literally almost at the very, almost at the end of World War II or right at the end of World War II. Okay, so the Friar de Kadebo describes how um, he's, and he's, he's speaking about what happened in the past. Okay, and he starts to speak about the fact that on Simchas Torah, years before that, in Tafresh Memches, his father, that means the Rebbe Rashab, was speaking and he spoke a mimer. And in this mimer, he spoke about the fact that the simple Jews made a very, very, very great impression on him. They made such a great impression on him that in Lubavitch, there was a group of simple people they were called, they, their name was Poale Tzedek. That was their name. If you take those two words, basically it means uh, righteous, good deeders, I guess you could, you could say. And um, what did they do? They would wake up three o'clock in the morning every single day, and they would get together three o'clock in the morning and say Tehillim, all of them together. And after that, after they said Tilim B'tzibor all together, they would sit and they would learn different dinim. This is what they would do. And he says that, where would they do this? This group of Jews, they would do it in a little shul, a shtibul, that was called Binyamin's shtibul, in, in Binyamin's little shul. And he says as follows, that people would go out of the base medrash when they were finished, two people together, three people together, they would walk each other out. And you could hear them, they would, they would be discussing with each other what they had just studied, which halachas, which dinim they just studied, and they would review it as they made their way to work. And the Fred Kareba continues, and he says that what happened in Tafresh Nun Beis, it was the wedding, the, his, bro, his, uh, his brother-in-law had a wedding, Fred Kareba's brother-in-law, who was it? It was with Rav Moshe HaKayin Horenstein. He was the Hassan. And there was Sheva Brachas. So what happened by the Sheva Brachas? 
lots and lots of people would come to the Sheva Brachas. You know, it was, uh, the Rebbe Rashab was there. It was very, very special. It says, what happened? By one of these Sheva Brachas, what happened? My father, the Rebbe Rashab, started very much to praise the simple Jews, the ones that were called Pawel Tzedek, these people. And he said, the idur was gain a ruiz for base medrash, uraiden svishu zich begun avelchen esis din, mendarif of them cooken vi malach mahol cooked a ruif, when it's this ois bis husan shall you throw. Ich volt zeir velun gain a tans mediiden. So it's Sheva Brachas. And in the middle of the Sheva Brachas, there's lots of visitors, lots of great chassidim and all kinds of people. And the Rebbe Rashab says, he sees these simple Jews and he starts to talk about them. And he says, these Jews are so, tr I treasure them so much and I love them. They're so dear to me so much. They're so special, these Jews, these Poel Leitzedek, the ones that started this Tillam group and they study together. What? It's so special that even to Malach Machol, he looks to them to understand what it, ha what it means to have the schus of a Jew. And he was so overwhelmed when he said this to Rebbe Rashab that he said, you know what? If they, if they were here now, I would love to go dance with them. Now, what happened at that moment when he said that happened to be that from one of the people from this Paul Eitzedek group was there. And his name was, this is what Friedrich Rebbe writes, his name was Mati Yossi David Shloimus. So he was Mati Yossi David, I guess the son of Shloime. Okay. And he says, the Rebbe, Friedrich Rebbe writes, that he was a very lebedika id. He was a very lively guy. He was a real doer. He got things done. And he was a real, uh, he did things for the community. He was very, very not lazy. And he was also part of the volunteer fire department. That's how he, he cared about everybody, every kind of Jew. And as a matter of fact, when he heard the, when, by the Simcha, when he heard this, he was the one, one of the people when he heard what the Rebbe said about the simple Jews, he knocked on the table then, and he said, and he, oh, he knocked on the table, he took his hand and he knocked on his heart, and he said, I, I want to start this group of Jews to say Tillim. And he was one of the founders of this Poel Tzedek of saying Tillim. When the Rebbe Rashab heard this, what happened? When this Jew heard this, that the Rebbe Rashab said, I would like to go dance with you. So what did he say? He got up and he screamed, Rebbe, Rebbe, we are here. We're said, we're here. We're here to dance with you. And he, he created a, an aisle so that every, the guys who were there could walk through. And he said to the Rebbe, we're here, we're here, we're ready to listen. And then the Rebbe Rashab came over to them and danced with them. This was like mind boggling. And they were big, big Hasidim there, big Talmidei Chachamim. And they were like flabbergasted that this took place. Okay, at this time, there was a Hasid, one of the big Hasidim. His name was Rabbi Yishaya Berlin. That was his name. And the Rebbe Rebbe writes here, his, this whole thing is in Yiddish, but these words he writes in Hebrew. Maybe because he wants to make a difference. He doesn't really want it to be the same, understandable. He says he was a chassid, but he didn't have such a great love in Avas Yisrael. He, he wasn't the greatest in this mitzvah, but he was great in other things. But there was another chassid, his name was Shalom Daiv Kabakov. He had the real geschmack in another Jew. He really loved another Jew. So the Rebbe Rashab, what did he do when he came back from dancing with these simple Jews who were the Poel Eitzedek? What did he do? He came to them and he saw, they saw that he was, the Rebbe Rashab was dripping with sweat. He was literally saturated with sweat. And he said to these two chassidim that I mentioned, he said to them, I just bathed in the pleasure of the schosim of the Bnei Yisrael. But this is heher von zeyushal mitzvah. This is even greater than the sweat of working very hard to do a mitzvah. So you can understand 
what kind of schosim these Jews had. And it goes, the Frit Kerebukan goes on to say that they were so great, people loved them because they were so humble and so real, that their circle really broadened and broadened, and it began to include all kinds of things. It included people that were that were different kinds of craftsmen, people that were tailors, people that were shoemakers, people who knew halacha, they would all study dinim together, and, and all kinds of things. And they would discuss all kinds of things about when you're allowed to da- stop in the middle of davening, when, when you're supposed to eat, you know, all kinds of things that were related to halacha. <laughs> And so this is one of the things that the Friedrich Rebbe describes here. And then, it's so interesting, I know many of us, probably all of us have heard this story, but if you want to know where it's written, it's written right here towards, uh, right after what I just told you, that what happened, the Friedrich Rebbe continues in this far bring it, and he says, there was once a Hasid, his name was it, a Manya Manasan. And he was a Hasid of, the, he was a Hasid by the Rebbe Rashab. And what happened? He, he, they were discussing once a, a, a number of people, he and a number of other people. He said, why did the Rebbe Rashab, why was he so mahabed, these simple Jews? Why, why did he give them so much honor? Why did he honor them so much? And the Reb Manya Manasan, who was a very big Hasid, he he wondered very much, and he finally asked. He said, "Was macht ihr von seiner ganzen Indien? Why are you making such a big deal about these simple Jews?" So the Rebbe answered him, "They haben in sich meilas because they have tremendous advantages." And this Hasid said, "Ich sehe nicht. I don't see there." Milas, I don't see their advantages. So this is the famous answer, which we all know this story, but this is where it's printed. So this Reb Manya, he was a very well-known diamond dealer. And later the Rebbe asked him to go and to bring a package of diamonds and to lay it out. And he said, you know, ask me, show me the diamonds and I will tell you which is the most beautiful diamond. So, of course, what happened? He laid out the diamonds and he, he, you know, he laid it all out beautifully, every single stone. And of course, the Rebbe picked one stone and he said, This, this is a beautiful diamond. It's really wondrous. And he said, uh, You know, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't see that it's so great. He says, why not? He says, because you have to be a maven. You have to be an understander in diamonds to understand which is the most beautiful diamond. It doesn't necessarily, you know, you have to have that eye. You have to be trained. So the Rebbe said, that's exactly it. A Jew is a wondrous, the wondrous diamond. But you also, you have to have a trained eye to know. You don't see the soul. We don't see the soul of the Jew. That only a trained eye could see. A Rebbe. The Ebershter could see. So I think, you know, we're, we're coming now to Sukkot. And Sukkot is a time where in the beginning, we have the first few days of Sukkot. And those are the days, of course, where we carry the, all, the, all of the tefillas that we had for Rosh Hashanah and all of the bakashas that we had for tefillas and bakashas from Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And... We finally know that we're coming out to the Yontif where we're going to be, for sure, we're going to feel all the goodness and all the brachas and all the kindness of Hashem. And we're going to be surrounded by the sukkah. And we know, what do we know? We know that how do we, how, how do we march? How do we win a war? We know that soldiers have, you know, it's, 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 I never thought in my lifetime I would see this, you know, we used to hear that in the soldiers, when there would be wars, soldiers would sing a victory march. Why they sing a victory march? They didn't even fight the war yet. Why are they singing the march? Because if they sing the march and it gets them all riled up and all excited and really gets them, they're much more eager to go and, and it brings them a lot of highest. And they, they, have, they feel for sure that they're going to win. So what, what do we do? It says that we have 
we unfortunately we see this now and now you could see hundreds of videos you see it's so heartwarming it's so sad at the same time but of course we will be victorious to see the soldiers and they how do they go they they daven they sing they blow shofar they and they go they go and they know they're going to be they're going to do muhammad hashem that's exactly what it is so we sitting here are not carrying guns and we're not doing that but what do we do so Hasidus explains that you could you could actually translate the four minim that we have, you know, the lul of the esrog, the hadasim, and the aravis. We all know that these are symbolic of the of different kinds of personas, different kinds of people. What is the unity of Bnei Yisrael? We are not all the same, and we do not have to be all the same. Our diversity is really our strength. Our differences is really our unity. And we bind, we don't just have these four pieces, that we bind them together, right? We bind three of them together and we take and we shake all four of them together. This is our spiritual ammunition. And it's told that what is the sukkah? The sukkah that we sit in the sukkah, that is the song, that is our victory march. We sit in the sukkah, we praise Hashem with Nugunim with making brachas, and in the sukkah, we shake the four the four species, you know, the arba minim, and we wave them to all corners of the earth because we're showing the unity. You know, it says in the Talmud that really the whole, that, that it would be great if all, in, 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 if all the Jews in the world would sit in one sukkah. That's what it says in the Talmud, in Sukkah. So, so the Rebbe explains, yes, we do all sit in one Sukkah, in one spiritual Sukkah. We all celebrate the same Yontif. We all do the same mitzvahs. We are all sitting in the same Sukkah. Hashem is hugging all of us together. We are perhaps physically in different Sukkahs because that's the way the, way the world is set up with the limitations that we have physically. But we're all now coming to that yontif. And even that's not enough. What happens after that yontif? After that yontif, we come then to the next part, which is, of course, Hashayi Raba, Shmini Atzeres, and Simchas Torah. And that, that is literally the epitome of what happens. It's like, uh, actually, the, the Rebbe Rashab is the one that said that the 48 hours of Shemini Atzeres and Simchas Torah are so special and so precious that if we would really look at these 48 hours, we would be able to pull out of barrels and pitchers and pots and, and, and uh, bottles the most precious, amazing gifts, Begashmias and Baruchnias. And how do we get these gifts? We actually bring them down through the dancing. And this shows us that, like we said earlier, we don't have to be, you You could be a person that knows the whole, kol Torah kula, that knows the entire Torah. You could be a person that knows only the letter Aleph. It doesn't matter. Why? Because we're taught that when it comes to Simchas Torah, it's a day that we celebrate, we dance. But we don't just dance. We dance with the Torah. We dance if it would be just people dancing, that's beautiful also. But we actually hold the Torah when we dance. And in a very famous sikha, the Rebbe speaks about the fact that if we're celebrating the Torah, then wouldn't it make more sense for us to unroll, open up the Torah and unroll it and dance with it opened because we're celebrating the Torah. We don't really see what's in it if it's covered. And the Rebbe says, no, specifically we do not dance with it open because once we open it, and we dance with it opened, that everybody right away starts to think to themselves, oh, I don't know anything. If I would look in this Torah, there's so much I don't know. So I just feel like a nobody, or it just depresses us. The Rebbe says, no, you know why? Because it doesn't matter how much you know. That's why the Rebbe says, you don't dance with your head, you dance with your feet. Because your feet, everybody's feet are equal. Doesn't matter. Your head could be a head that knows the whole Torah. Your head could be a head that knows nothing except that you're Jewish or anything in between that. And it could even be that you don't know. It could be. But the fact that you have a Jewish neshama 
all Jews are equal in this respect. So it's a real unity, it's a real unifying factor when we think about the fact that, look, we saw the simple Jews, who did the Rebbe Rashab go dance with? He danced with them. And he was so delighted that he was soaked with sweat from dancing with them, greater than dancing with the greatest Jew, that the greatest mitzvahs in the world. So we see from here that this is a yontif that we come now from Rosh Hashanah, first of all, from all of Elul. And then, you know, we, 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 had, we went to see the king in the field, and then we finally came into the king's palace. And now we're coming, getting ready to go out of the king's palace and to go into the world and to rejoice with everything that we got from the palace of the king. And the Rebbe always taught us that what does it mean that when we come now to Sukkot and then we come to Shmiri Atzeres and to Simchas and to, and to Simchas Torah, it means that everything in our lives, no matter what, if we keep Hashem in the picture, what happens? It says it says it's not um, it's 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 Yom Simchas It's the day like Simchas Torah. It's the day of our rejoicing. It doesn't say the day of my rejoicing. It says the day of our rejoicing because it's us rejoicing together with Hashem. And even though when the Yom Tovim finish and what happens, we go back to our lives and, you know, we start to be living our everyday mundane little things that happen. So this is our reminder that it should always be Simcha Seinu. We always have to have the Ebesh there together with us. So I'll just conclude by saying that I think it's amazing to see all of you beautiful ladies here. I uh, Just from being here a few minutes early, I, I, I met people from different countries and, and, and people who speak different languages and people who from, come from everywhere, different ages, different stages, you name it. But we are all one because we all have that neshaba. We all have that helak elokami mal mamish. We all have that little piece of Hashem in us. So we're all the same. Hashem should bench all of us that Hashem should shower everybody, starting, of course, with our brothers and sisters in Eretz Yisrael. Every single Jew should be safe and sound. Every single Hayal and Hayalat, every single one of the hostages, everyone, everyone should be returned home in, with, in, and we should have real shalom this Simchas Torah, this Shemini Atzeres Simchas Torah should be the absolute enormous victory that will be the answer to everything that has happened in the past almost year. And the world will finally see that Umbal Ha'aretz Deyes Hashem. Hashem is the one that runs the world. Hashem's knowledge will fill the world like the waters cover the sea. And we will finally have the promise that we were given and we will, so we are the lucky generation that will see that. My pleasure. Thank you for coming out in this lovely windy weather. <laughs> Thank you, Michal. On behalf of all of us, I want to give Mrs. Jacobson a uh, beautiful book. That's so nice. I actually, when you were talking about it, I was like, it's so nice. I should go buy myself one. <laughs> well, I we saw it, but I did not have it. I do not have it. It is really, really beautiful. That is so much. Thank you so much. I'm so touched, really. Thank you. Thank you, yes, thank so you. Much. Thank you, really. That is so nice. And just a reminder to everybody um, that we will be having Hashem, another Korean next Monday <laughs> in the Sukkah, 679 Montgomery Street, the same it's building as Coltive. A very big sukkah this year. Hashem should bench us with even bigger sukkah next year. Um, and everybody was invited to join us then with Rabbi Binyamin Shachter. He will be speaking then. Um, also, a reminder to everybody to, that tonight is Lili Nishmas for Yisrael Ben Gedalia Karp in honor of his yurt site. Amazing Nisham, I have a really high Aliyah. Thank you, Miriam, for sponsoring tonight. And um, yes, let's keep. So embrace Hashem's embrace. I'm so excited Absolutely. for Sukkot. Yes. Right. May it be, honestly, it should be in Yerushalayim, all of us. Um, imagine, imagine that Sukkot. Uh -huh.
Amen. And with that, uh, we have a tradition to take a selfie. We don't run away from that one, right? By now, I should know the tradition. I was going right? to say, like, you know this. If you would like to turn around. Okay, whatever you say. I can't say that in the oh, She's one person. I don't know if I'm in the right side. Is this okay? Are you okay? I don't care. Okay. Everybody wants to say, like, cheese? I don't know. One, two, three. Buckets. Buckets. One, two, three. Yay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, and I'll still go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to put work here now. For girls, for whoever.